Thank you for tuning in. This is DJ Fob Fresh from SegaShiro.com, the Sega resource. And today we're continuing our old school Sega Saturn coverage. We're looking at Die Hard Trilogy. Developed by Probe Entertainment of the UK and published by Fox Interactive, Die Hard is a game that promises three explosive packages on one disc. Die Hard Trilogy is a title that is based off the first three installments of the Die Hard series action movies. Now, I'm a big fan of the Die Hard series. I've watched all the movies, of course, and pretty much played every game in, in the franchise, which most are pretty terrible. However, this one is an interesting one to look at because on the PlayStation, it was actually incredibly successful. So on the Sony PlayStation, this game eventually became a greatest hits game, so it sold well enough, and it was also well received. I think GameSpot at the time gave it something like a 9.4 rating. Fox Interactive also saw it fit to release a sequel to the title called Die Hard Trilogy 2 Viva Las Vegas. However, that only remained on the PlayStation and never came over to the Saturn. However, much of the success of the PlayStation version did not transfer over to the Sega Saturn version. During development, uh, the Sega Saturn and PC versions of this title were started pretty much after the PlayStation versions were complete. It required extensive redevelopment. The maps needed to be simplified due to the polygon count that the Saturn was capable of producing. Now, for better or worse, this game is one of the ones that really showed the discrepancies between the Saturn and the PlayStation when it came to handling 3D models and 3D graphics. So it's bad enough that this title was plagued with muddier textures and a sluggish frame rate and overall choppy gameplay. What really kind of puts the nail in the coffin for it on the Sega Saturn is the controls. The game just feels sloppy and a little bit uncontrollable and choppy. So the controls move sluggish and you can't really get to where you want to go with any sort of speed or accuracy. Now, despite all the issues with this game, there are a few moments where it does succeed. One of those successes is the three different distinct styles of gameplay. Now each gameplay type might be shallow and they might not work as well as they do on the PlayStation system. They're still a little bit of fun and they reasonably fit the universe that they're trying to expand upon. In the first gameplay type, it's essentially a third person shooter and you're running around as John McClane and you're going up through the levels of the Nakatomi Plaza saving hostages. In the second game, in Die Hard 2 Die Harder, it's a pretty poor clone of Virtual Cop. The third gameplay type is driving, which is represented in Die Hard 3, Die Hard with a Vengeance. And in that one, it's almost like a crazy style, like city racer you're just getting from checkpoint to checkpoint just trying to hit certain things at certain times it actually is pretty fun however the controls again are a little iffy and the hit detection and collision issues are pretty wild as you'll see in the gameplay footage that's coming up probably the other success of the title is the wacky and sort of black comedy sense of humor in this game um, the gore is over the top and yet, so pixelated, this game actually reminds me of the video games in episodes of The Simpsons. Just sort of the way the gore is represented and the way the characters yell and scream. I actually found the voice acting um, to be suitably terrible. And by that I mean, it's bad, but it's funny bad. Now, if you're a fan of the movies, you know that Detective John McClane has a lot of one-liners that he used. And this game uses them in suitable fashion. Particularly, Eric Allen Baker, who is the voice actor for Detective John McClane in this, when he says happy trails, I just about break out laughing. In fact, at the Stake of Shiro Bunker, that term is now an inside joke that we throw around at each other all the time after playing this game. So, the voice acting isn't good by any measure, however, it's bad enough to be hilarious, and that's where sort of that nostalgia factor creeps in. In terms of supporting your various peripherals for the Sega Saturn, this does both support the arcade racing wheel and the Sega Stunner, so that's kind of cool because it has support for those items. If I had to choose one of the three games that I enjoyed the most, I would choose the gameplay for Die Hard 3 with a Vengeance. I found the graphics to be the best in this selection. Um, you know, there were lots of particles, lots of things flying around, the explosions are hilarious, and 
this also seemed to be the gameplay type where John McClane, or I guess the voice actor who portrays him, was the most vocal. So it was also the funniest of the whole gameplay set. There is no way that I could recommend this game outside of camp value and for hardcore collectors. If you're going to play it, you might as well play it on the PlayStation where it demonstrates the high points of the system as opposed to the Saturn where the lack of transparencies and effects are really apparent. That said, Sega fans also got Die Hard Arcade, which is arguably the best Die Hard game in the entire franchise history. But that's in another review for another day. This is DJ Fob Fresh signing out, playing bad games so you don't have to.